Hey guys, so Vanquish Soul is one of the new meta contenders in the current format right now and it's actually doing pretty well. So I thought I'd take the time to go through some of the topping deck lists from regionals as well as nationals and just kind of break down the most played hand traps and staples as well as any tech choices just so that you have a better understanding of that deck and help you better prepare when you face it. So before we continue, big thanks to my sponsors as always, uh, links and discount codes in the description below for Yu-Gi-Oh supplies. So let's just go over some general overall stats for Vanquish Soul. So in terms of regional or Nats tops, so regional being top 8, Nats being whatever the top cut was for French and German ones, they're usually like top 64-ish. Uh, and so it had the 5th most tops in the current format post list. and I know this because thanks to, you know, uh, very, very smart individuals such as TSPYGO, LAMPYYGO, as well as Ivan, who uh, collect regional tops, so I'll link those down below as well. And so, you know what, uh, you know, there's obviously Kashira, like Branded and Swords and Sprite, uh, but Vanguard Soul is really holding its own despite being kind of considered as like a tier 2 deck coming into this new format. Uh, in terms of Dueling Book, Third most played deck with a 56 percentage uh, match win percentage. I'm kind of using proxy measures here for this one. And then also YG Omega has some really neat data available as well. And so on that, it was also the third most played deck in this current format and with a 54 percent match win percentage. So honestly, pretty pretty solid and uh, pretty consistent actually. So in terms of deck size, uh, most were uh, 40 cards, uh, with like one being 41, 43, this is obviously a small sample size, but the reason why I personally like to understand the deck sizes is that, you know, very often at like regional level events, uh, or any event really, you're going to often see players ask their opponent, you know, how many cards in the main deck before the match starts, which is something you are allowed to ask and something do that you do need to answer truthfully. And you know, when it comes to, let's say they answer something over 40, uh, you know, very likely it could be a deck like Branded because almost always they don't play 40 cards so it's something that can kind of give it away i mean obviously they might be playing something completely janky but you know then you have on the other hand something like kashira sprite or even like let's say flunder they're almost always playing 40 cards so those are some of the hints that you could possibly gain but with uh vanquish soul maybe it's not that clear uh in terms of engine so uh, the cash tier engine and what I mean by this is something more than just playing Fenrir because Fenrir at this point is just more of a staple a lot of times in a lot of decks outside of cash tier right uh, but this one uh, we actually had just under half of the decks play a small cash tier engine uh, but realistically it was just that one rise heart with the Fenrir there was only one deck that actually played a real cash tier engine in terms of with you know like unicorn the field spell as well as like one theosis but for the most part it looks like if they are playing a cash tier you know engine it's just with one rise heart uh, also, DPE was sort of getting some traction, uh, especially, you know, when this deck gets Ash on, let's say, I don't know, something like Raisin. Uh, then you have, like, Fusion Destiny, which is a really crazy card, uh, and DPE is quite, quite strong. But it looks like, at least among right now in the current format, with uh, the topping list at least, uh, almost only, like, two decks were playing it. Uh, so it's not too, too common, but perhaps it will be uh, more common uh, moving forward. In terms of hand trap overview, uh, four Vanquish Soul lists, uh, at least the ones that topped, uh, range from 6 to 17 hand traps in the main, which is kind of a large number. Uh, median was 9 though, and if you saw my uh, regional top cut breakdown of like all decks in the that topped uh the median was around six so this is definitely a little bit higher you know this seems to have some a little bit more flex spots in this deck uh in the side though you know three hand traps uh as a median number uh whereas all decks when i did my previous breakdown of uh regional tops uh that was around five as for going second board breaking cards uh range from one to eleven with the median of six board breaking cards in the main uh all decks uh it was about five when i did it uh with the previous regional breakdown and then as for the side, uh, ranged from 5 to 13, but 8 uh, board breakers in the side. So a pretty hefty number. So now let's just cover the most played hand traps as usual that I do in any kind of YCS top cut breakdown kind of things. So of course, number one is Ash. Not too surprising. Ash in general in any deck is the most played hand trap. And this actually also happens to be a fire, which uh, for Vanquish Soul could potentially come up because all of the Vanquish Soul monsters, except for Mad Love, I believe, you know, if you reveal a monster that's like a fire, it does have some additional effects. Uh, Ghost Bell was another popular one. And this is also Earth, which can also be relevant in Vanquish Soul because a lot of them do have effects uh, that involve Earth. Uh, revealing a monster with an Earth attribute. And you know what? Ghost Bell is actually pretty good right now. You've been seeing this in uh, among all decks as well that I recently showed. Uh, can be good against, you know, something like Labyrinth. Uh, against Branded can definitely be good uh, depending on the situation. Uh, but overall, a pretty versatile card. Uh, and then Imperm, which is really, again, not too surprising. I mean, most decks are playing this. It plays around Talents, which is a very popular card right now, uh, which you would have seen if you saw my regional top cut breakdown video. Uh, and then we have Druid's Worm, as well as also Bestial Magnum. Uh, kind of interesting that uh, there was actually like one deck that played Druid's Worm, but not Magma Nut, but it's not too, too 
uh, uncommon. It's definitely been seen before. So Bestials right now are pretty, pretty good. Uh, you know, while Math Mech has kind of calmed down, you know, there's still Bestials, or rather, sorry, there's still Branded, which this deck can really help against, as well as against Labyrinth. It's also can be pretty useful. So I, I guess it's not too, too surprising. Uh, some other hand traps, we do have Droll, uh, another hand trap that was very popular just the previous format with like super heavy samurai being tier one but even now it's actually still good uh you know kind of split in terms of main and side deck play but i think it's definitely worth playing right now in this format uh we also have dimension shifter this is i think very interesting to see because these are some of the things that you want to know as you go into this matchup right like you might think that oh they're all gonna be on shifter and you have to prepare it but it looks like it actually wasn't like actually just around half of the topping list were on shifter i'm guessing you know it's not like absolutely amazing like let's say something like Hashira or Flow Underies they actually play really well under shifter it helps them but a lot of decks you know for example like sprite was a key one during tier limit format like they can play shifter but it's not all that optimal uh, so those are some key differences so it's something to actually keep this in mind as you side deck uh, we also have some other hand traps that weren't seeing too much play uh, effect failure nib and DD Crow, so you know, these are hand traps that are pretty pretty good, but it really depends and you know, we are dealing with a small sample size, so who knows if we had more decks to deal with. In terms of the most played staples, uh, Cosmic Cyclone is definitely the most popular among all decks in general. Uh, really good against like, Runic, Runic variants are back again, so it's really nice, you know, there's always, uh, like for example, because of increase in play of anti-spell fragrance, um, not to say that that affects this deck in particular, but just in general, you are seeing Cosmic Cyclone a lot uh, for reasons like that. Uh, you also have Fenrir, which is very, very popular in this deck, especially, again, because it is Earth, so it kind of works out as well in terms of having to reveal uh, for some added effects, and Fenrir is good going first or second. Uh, OCG actually just banned this at the time of recording uh, this morning uh, to, you know, zero. It's uh, pretty crazy. Uh, I guess maybe not too surprising. I think in the TCG, it'll probably go to one, and maybe in some fashion it gets banned. I probably, I doubt it, but, you know, I think this will definitely go to one at some point. Uh, and then we have evenly matched again pretty generic not anything specific to vanquish soul realistically i think any deck will really play this against vanquish soul though i think this card can be kind of not that great realistically because a lot of them like tag out from their hand and their board is not that like huge as you would see with like most other uh you know tier one kind of decks uh, and then we have curry card different this one in particular is definitely uh, kind of specific to uh, Vanquish Soul because again it's another fire so it's got some relevancy there in terms of added effects for the Vanquish Soul monsters but it's also really nice it's essentially kind of like a kaiju but better uh, in some sense and so really really popular in this deck and something that you do have to consider when you're playing against a Vanquish Soul player although realistically it's probably going to be kind of hard to play around uh, Kurikara. Uh, and then we have There Can Be Only One. This is definitely one of the floodgates that this deck has been known to play. Not all of them are playing though, at least. Also kind of important to keep in mind when it comes to siding, for example, back removal. Uh, but you know, if you are a deck that kind of loses to There Can Be Only One, which is pretty much most decks in general, uh, especially like rogue decks. Uh, but then again, you have a deck like Branded that can actually play under There Can Be Only One quite, quite well. So those are things to consider. But uh, definitely if your deck dies to this, then you're gonna have to know that you will probably have to side some back removal. Uh, and then some Dark Will and No More, uh, this is actually very very popular among all decks right now. You know, you have Sprite variants coming back and in general it's a very good going second card. You don't really lose too much out of it, I mean sure you can't do any damage, but realistically all that matters is clear your opponent's board, set yours up, and they probably will lose next turn. Uh, we also have Dogron. Uh, so in general, uh, I mean this is specific to Dogron, but there was also Kumongus that was also seen in four decks, and that one's an Earth, which is again, you know, these fire and Earth attributes are pretty relevant in Vanquish Soul. Dogron's of course a fire, uh, so definitely seeing a good amount of play. So they are going to be playing Kaiju's Kurkara, so you do have to be aware of that. Uh, and then you have Talents, which uh, I don't think is really anything specific to Vanguard Soul. This is something that is seeing a lot of common play right now uh, among all decks. You know, you, you pretty much have uh, most decks activating some kind of monster effect uh, in their main phase, especially when you're going second. So uh, this is definitely going to be pretty common. Uh, we also have D Barrier. I guess this is kind of interesting for Vanquish Soul. Might be a little bit relevant because they don't really lose to this card, I don't think. Uh, so, you know what? It's really good against something like Branded. Uh, against Kashira, it's not that amazing. I mean, it can come up. Uh, but, you know what? It's there and it's just essentially a card that's very, very hard to stop. Uh, and then you have Feather Duster. Really, nothing too surprising there. Uh, no drawbacks and you're going to see most decks play this card. 
In terms of some tech choices, uh, I did notice Eradicator being played in a few lists as well as uh, Deck Devastation Virus. Uh, so those are uh, along with Trap Trick actually in one list, so that's kind of funny. So definitely something to keep in mind of. It's probably not too too common, but you do have to be aware of it. I did also see another list playing uh, Summon Limit as their Floodgate. And you know what I think is interesting of all of this is that coming into this new format, I was told, especially because I had a regional that first weekend of the new ban list, uh, I was told that Vanquish Soul plays Skill Drain, and among at least the topping list, we did not see Skill Drain at all. I'm not saying that they don't play it, obviously it's a very small sample size we're working with, and you know, I don't want you to get mad at me the next regional you go to and Vanquish Soul flips the Skill Drain on you. Uh, but just some of the things to keep in mind at least when it comes to siding, you know, if you have kind of a hard time uh, fitting in extra back row hate, perhaps it's not as uh, important or rather not as critical is probably the better word uh, just because you saw that a lot of times the key cards that they are playing is something like there can be only one but not like skill drain for example but it really depends on how your deck can function around those floodgates as well so anyways that was it for this analysis of uh, vanquish soul let me know if you like that kind of video i can certainly try to do it for some of the other decks obviously crush here and labyrinth it's kind of like boring at this point but if you're interested i can always do it i used to do this kind of video a little bit in more detail actually going even over like the ratios of the main, main engine cards i'm probably not going to get to that level anymore but you know what if this video does well i can certainly do more moving forward uh, i certainly enjoy making it i think it really helps me uh, in terms of preparing for events as well so anyways uh big thanks to all of you for watching a big Thanks to my Patreons as always for supporting the channel. Really, really means a lot. Um, well, take care, guys.